Victor Adetiba with ScrumLife.com, back with our book club. This episode is sponsored by Mansa Tech Training Academy, link in the description. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Today, we're reading another excerpt from the book, 97 Things Every Scrum Practitioner Should Know, Collective Wisdom from the Experts, edited by Gunther Verheim. Page 42. Communicating prioritized requirements through the product backlog. James O. Copeland. Well, guess what? The product backlog is not how Scrum communicates needs to the team. It is neither priority ordered nor built around requirements. Yet many Scrum teams carry over practices and artifacts from the waterfall world and fail to realize all that the Scrum way has to offer. Perhaps the best way of thinking of the product backlog is as a register for all decisions made between the product owner, developers, and stakeholders. So first, it is not so much a communication tool as a tool to remember decisions. People write for two reasons, to communicate and to remember. To a first approximation, we don't use writing as our primary communication mechanism in Agile. We speak person to person. We do write to remember. Second, it's a product backlog, not a requirements backlog. It is divided into product increments that are cogent units of delivery that appear at the end of each sprint cycle. The backlog is further broken down into product backlog items, PBIs, which are independent units of delivery sized to reduce risk by increasing the frequency of feedback and by reducing leakage. They are usually not the advertised features of delivery, but should be thought of as internal divisions of the work to reduce risk and mark progress. The focus isn't on delivering a percentage of the PBIs, but on delivering the sprint goal. The product increment should always deliver a coherent function, which is most often tied to the sprint goal. Correspondingly, there are no user stories on the product backlog. Think about it. Each of these product backlog slices represents some aspect of a deliverable that the product owner has envisioned. They represent solutions to be built rather than requirements to be addressed. Yes, we can annotate PBIs with requirements, but the product owner who relates only to requirements is shirking their responsibility to own the product, not just its requirements. Hence, the catchy title. Third, the product backlog is ordered by delivery, not priority. Mismanaged dependencies are the bane of complex development. By designing the delivery plan around delivery order, the team can easily plan to reduce dependency surprises up front. Further customers know the order in which they will get things done. Unless feedback causes everyone to agree to change things. And in the best developments, know about when they will be getting them. This supports flow through the process at a macro level. Product owners may, of course, keep a list of either requirements or product increments ordered by priority. It's just that this list is not the product backlog. This has profound repercussions for the process. In old style development, the product manager would clarify requirements to the developers who would design a business solution and create a technical implementation of that solution. In Scrum, product owners take business requirements and shape a business solution that follows their vision and communicate it to the developers who in turn craft an implementation using tools and technologies of their choice. So when you think product owner, think Steve Jobs for the iPhone or Linus Torvalds for Linux or Lee Iacocca for the Mustang, it's that person with the vision, the vision of the product. I think this was the thought provoking article. Um, Oftentimes when I speak about the product backlog, I do speak about it as a um, 
prioritize ordered list of um, requests or features or enhancements that a product owner wants to implement. But this charges us to think about the product backlog um, in a different way. And while I do agree that the product backlog is ordered by delivery, not priority, I think that there could be a blurred line between those two because if we talk about just the priority, but there happens to be a dependency of something else being developed ahead of that, that dependency then also becomes a priority to complete so that the dependent stories or features or backlog items that come after that um, can be developed. So although I don't know that I agree 100% with the article, um, there are a lot of pieces that I do agree with. Um, we do write for a couple of reasons, right? Um, to communicate, to remember. Maybe we could add a couple of more in there to entertain. Um, but I think for the most part, when product owners feel like the only mode of communication they need to have with their team is through the product backlog, is through the requirements, is through the acceptance criteria, they are doing their teams a disservice. It's integral, it's important for uh, product owners to remain engaged and to remain in constant communication and conversation with their development team. So many times in conversation, new questions arise, additional um clarity can come from having a one-on-one -on -one conversation. I can just think to um, times that I was working in the office prior to COVID versus working remotely after COVID and things that take an email chain to go back and forth among two or more people If we were in the office, literally a three minute conversation would clarify something that we've been emailing about all day. And so I do understand and agree with the value of face to face communication, verbal communication, uh, the ability to ask questions and get answers um, in real time. So I definitely encourage product owners to communicate, communicate, communicate as much as possible with their developers, not not through the documented requirements. I can't, I can't tell you how many times we've had a developer ask a question or seek clarification or deeper understanding on a user story or a backlog item and the product owner's response is, did you read the story? It's in Jira, look in Jira. Everything's documented in Jira. While that may be true, there should still be that common courtesy of having a conversation to at least get everything out in the open and make sure that there is a shared understanding of what is in JIRA and not just leave it at that because oftentimes written word can't communicate with the depth and breadth that spoken word can. So as product owners bring user stories to refinement ceremonies and even into sprint planning, have those conversations. Talk about current state, future state, um, what you hope to be able to achieve by implementing this. Receive questions from your developers and answer them. And then document the decisions that are made um, within those user stories, within those requirements. Yeah. Did you enjoy today's episode? I hope you did. Um, leave me a comment letting us know what you think. Definitely looking forward to seeing you in our upcoming episode. Peace.